Hi everyone, Ian here from the Media Center. And in today's video, I'll be showing you how to set up the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro wireless video transmission system. This device allows you to wirelessly transmit a signal via HDMI or STI simultaneously to both external monitors and iOS or Android devices, such as phones and tablets. The benefit of a system which can be used across phones and tablets also means that an external monitor is always in the palm of your hand, as most people will likely have a smartphone of some sort. The benefit of a dedicated app also means the user will get a breadth of professional monitoring tools such as waveforms, zebras, and focus peaking directly on their phone, meaning the additional cost of an external monitor is no longer a prerequisite. Inside the box, you'll get the following contents. Two main units, the transmitter, which connects to the camera, and receiver, which connects to a monitor. Five antennas, a mains power cable, two large MPF batteries and their charger, and a HDMI cable. From this, there are two ways in which you can use this system. First, the transmitter can be used alongside the receiver, and this will allow you to connect to a monitor and two app devices, such as a phone or tablet at the same time. Alternatively, as a second option, the transmitter can be used on its own, without the receiver, and in this configuration, you can transmit to up to four app devices. The transmitter is easily identifiable by the red cold shoe locking ring, while the receiver's locking ring is blue. This Hollyland system uses a 5 GHz frequency range for transmitting video, and the transmitter has both SDI and HDMI in, meaning you can connect to any camera which has one of these ports. On the receiver, you have an SDI and HDMI out, allowing the signal to be carried onto the monitor. Both also have a DC input for using with mains power, a USB Type-C connection for power delivery via power banks, and Sony MPF battery plates, which will be your main power delivery method. To reduce heat, fan outlets are also on board, and we have some simple and easy to use navigation buttons for setting channel frequency and additional functionality. When transmitting to a monitor, connect the transmitter to your camera via the cold shoe and the receiver to your monitor. Connect a power supply, I'd recommend the MPF battery supplied, and then attach an SDI or HDMI cable depending on which camera you're using. Because all of our cameras have HDMI, this is the type of cable we supplied in the box. Some of our cameras do use SDI, so if you'd prefer this connection point, then ask one of our resource team and they'll supply you with a cable. In addition, our monitor of choice to use alongside the Mars is the Atomos Shinobi, which is also HDMI, and this cable comes supplied in its box. Again, if you'd prefer to use an SDI-based monitor, then we do have the Odyssey 7Q+. After the units are installed, make sure to attach the antennas to both the transmitter and receiver. Angle them to around 45 degrees, ensure your camera is turned on, and then press the on button on both units, which is located at the back. Once these initiate, the LED panel will show the device number, Wi-Fi signal strength, the scene mode, the device ID, the channel display, video format, fan status, and finally the battery voltage. The battery voltage indicator will be different depending on which type of power supply you're utilizing. To ensure both the transmitter and receiver are in sync, press the up and down buttons and adjust the channel until both units match. To confirm the channel change, press the center button and the units should sync automatically and you should now have a live view on your monitor. If interference ever occurs and you need to change the sync channel, you can do so at any time from either of the units, and the other will automatically recognize this and switch at the same time. To alter any menu settings, press and hold the center button for three seconds. Pressing up and down in this area will allow you to select functions and the center button will allow you to enable and disable parameters. Within the menu, you have the following options. Scene mode, fan speed, system settings, Wi-Fi password, version info, and exit. 
Scene Mode allows you to choose and optimize the transmission of your video signal. HD Mode prioritizes the image quality, but sacrifices the latency speed between the camera and your monitor, meaning the latency will be a bit longer. Speed Mode does the opposite. It provides less latency between the camera and monitor, however, it sacrifices the quality of the video signal. Balance Mode is in the middle ground. It tries to maintain both a good image quality and lower latency at the same time. However, in this mode, the image quality will not be as good as in HD mode, nor will the latency be as reduced when in speed mode. Fan speed allows you to change between auto, slow, or off. We recommend having this set to auto whenever possible as the fan noise is very minimal. The only time you'd ever need to switch this to slow or off is if the unit was very close to audio recording equipment and interfering with the audio quality. System settings allows you to rebind and pair the transmitter and receiver if they stop automatically syncing. Within here, you can also alter the language and reset the device to its default parameters. Wi-Fi password will show you the default password should you forget, and version info provides you with the latest firmware information while exit takes you back to the main channel window. For connecting to a phone or tablet, first download the Hollyland app. Next, go into your device Wi-Fi settings and select HLD plus the device ID and input the default password of 12345678. Once this is done, enter the app and you'll have three tabs along the bottom. First is device which is where you choose which Halilon product you're connecting to. Next is album, which is the save location for screen grabs and in-device video recording, and me, which shows your language and app and device version. Choose device, and the connect icon should be highlighted in orange. Click connect, and you should now have live monitoring from your device. Across the app, you have several useful tools, which will be located around the screen. If they're not initially visible, you can tap anywhere on the screen to enable them and performing the same action can also hide them. Tapping on these tools enables a function while pressing and holding down for a couple of seconds on the tools along the bottom allows you to alter certain parameters. For the first couple of tools, we have a waveform and a histogram. Pressing and holding on either of these allows you to change their opacity. Next to the histogram, we can also enable focus peaking and holding for a few seconds allows us to alter the color and the threshold of the peaking lines. Following this, we have zebras. And as with most zebra interfaces, we can alter the percentage level between zero and 100, useful for determining exposure levels for different types of picture profiles and log formats. Next to zebras, we have frame. And from here, we can alter the aspect ratios and how these ratios are presented on screen through changing the color or the ratio's transparency. In addition, you can also enable different types of center markers, choosing either a type of cross or a dot, and the aspect ratio's frame can be resized depending on personal preference. After this, we have magnification, which is touch enabled so you can easily move around the frame. Within the magnify options, you can adjust the magnification size and color of the magnification box. False color is also an option and holding this down brings up the false color scale. And this will allow you to identify different exposure levels within the frame through a range of solid colors. This is an excellent way for determining your middle gray and skin tone exposure as well as the black point or the clipping point. For example, in this shot, when I pull up the false color scale, I can see that the color purple represents areas which have only 2% light reflectance, which is pretty much at the black clipping point. This means anything reflecting around 2% will be shown in purple. Conversely, the color red represents 98% light reflectance, which is close to the clipping point. So any area which is in red is nearly overexposed and losing information. 
following this, the monochrome function allows us to see the RGB channel separately. And this can be useful when viewing the blue channel, as this tends to hold the greatest amount of noise across your image. If the blue channel is noisy, odds are your overall image will be noisy as well. Finally, the app also provides LUT overlays for some common log profiles, such as Canon and Sony, making it easier to monitor the sharpness, contrast, color, and exposure within the image. To the side of the screen, you can also capture a photo of the frame being viewed and make a screen recording straight onto your phone, meaning you have quick dailies that you can refer to. When taking a screenshot, you also have the ability to draw across the image, which can be really useful for making quick notes on set. For example, if you really liked that shot's composition, or you saw something in the scene which at a later date needed to be amended during the edit process. And these can also be useful for your production files or when discussing the project with an editor during post-production. The screenshot will be saved straight to the album on your device, and this can be accessed by pressing the back icon on the live view page and navigating to the album tab. If you decide you don't need this screen grab, you can also delete it from here as well. When recording a clip, playback will automatically occur after the recording has been stopped, and you can either press the back arrow to save the recording to your device or simply delete the clip. In the settings icon, you can select a cleaner channel if the channel you're currently using appears to have interference. This will automatically update the transmitter's channel as well as the devices. In the settings page, you also have the Wi-Fi password and name, and you can also lock the screen to avoid accidentally enabling tools when holding your device. Finally, if you need to adjust the screen brightness, you can do so by sliding your finger up and down on the left-hand side of your screen. And if you wish to adjust the volume, then you can do the same thing, but on the right-hand side of the screen. The 400S does transmit sound, so if you have headphones, you can connect these to your device and listen to the scenes as well as watch. Cheers for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful. And if you have any questions regarding the kit, please make sure to come and see any of the technical team within the resource center. And until next time, keep shooting, keep being creative, and we'll see you soon.